Mr. Woodhead's going to play first, and then we're going to have three performers, three members from the server play for him so that he can give some feedback. At the end, if there's time, we'll do some Q&A. And Funch, a.k.a. I forget his plebe, <laughs> made a, a feedback survey for us, too, so we can get your feedback on how this masterclass went and what we should do for future ones. So with that, I'm going to mute myself, and I'll pass it over to Sam Woodhead to tell us about himself, and then he'll play a solo. Great. Thank you very much. Um, it's a real honor to be here and doing the very first masterclass for the Discord Trombone server. Uh, just a quick little bit about myself. Um, I'm the uh, principal and solo trombonist with the United States Army Band Pershing Zone in Washington, D.C. Uh, I've been there for just about 19 years now. And uh, I'm also probably best known as the chairman of the American Trombone Workshop. That's a title and position I've been in for about 11 years now. Um, some other things about me, um, I do have a doctorate in music from the University of Maryland. Um, I study with Dr. Milton Stevens and John Swallow were two of my most prominent teachers. And I'm really excited to do this and hopefully uh, provide you some insights that will help. Um, certainly I would like to have as much time for questions and feedback uh, at the end of this. So I'm gonna play a little bit for you now just to kind of open things up. As uh, somebody, I'm trying to remember who said this. Oh. oh yeah, it was Barry Hearn, a good friend of mine who was uh, now currently principal trombone of the Dallas Symphony Orchestra. Uh, he gave a master class recently at the trombone workshop. And uh, he said, you know, if I'm gonna ask people to play for me, it only seems fair that I play for you. So uh, I'm gonna play a little bit of the uh, Fantastic Polka by Arthur Pryor. I'm not gonna play the whole thing. I'm gonna skip a couple of repeats just to kind of uh, get through it, but basically I'm gonna play the whole piece, okay? Thank <laughs> you. 
see here all right so i guess we're ready for um the first person to go ahead and play okay really nice um some of the the audio there kind of drops out a little bit so we're a little bit limited by what we can really uh pick on a little bit here just because the uh you know the limitations of the technology um but um, a couple basic things that I want you to really pay attention to are just the overall sense of the pulse and, and the rhythm. So you have a really nice uh, lilting 9-8 feel, which is what we want. We want to feel that triple meter. But what happens is when we get into those uh, uh, quadruplets, yeah. the time really starts to separate from what we had established. So one, three, one, two. Two three one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three one two three four one two three one two three four. So your, I know it's written in that way where the the triplets, and then you go into the the quadruplets and they have the tenuto mark over them. So they they also have a little bit more weight, right? But I I would just say that if you think of this as what what the composer is doing here, we're going from uh, three beats to four. If, if anything, that's an excitement of energy, not a pulling back, right? It's increasing the speed and the frequency of the, the notation. And if we accompany that with also kind of pulling back and like it, it, it's, we're getting a mis, mixed signal as for what we're really trying to do here. So if we're, we have that nice nine, eight, ba, ba, da, dee. Da 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 di da di da di da 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 di da 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 ba da da di da 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 di da 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 di da 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 da. So it kind of has. You see how the 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 motion actually accelerates, especially as we get to that last one where we get all six uh sixteenth notes in that measure. Yeah, keep think. You know, try to keep that pulse very regular. And if anything, we just want to actually lead that energy so everything is leading to that forte uh two before 230 right that's where forte is that's where all the rhythmic intensity goes to that makes sense okay so could you start you don't have to go all the way back let's start uh one two three four start in the fourth bar after 220 on that g sharp on beat three so right there sorry i'm, I'm gonna stop you <laughs> okay so you're getting yourself on a bad start by holding that uh, A sharp into the beat of uh, beat two too long. So you're, you're being very literal with the notation, but that's causing you to be late on those next two sixteenth notes. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one E and a two. So really think about that. If anything, use that downbeat of beat two on that A sharp. That's your breath. That's the note that you can actually leave out so that you can kind of propel forward, okay? Could you try that again, please? Good, yeah. It, it still feels though that it's like 
it's building. And then because you want to stylize those 16th notes so much that the energy just evaporates. Uh, D, ba, da, 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 da. And if we kind of get too robust and too thinking about the the tenuto marks, you're thinking da di da di da di da di da di da 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 da. It's it's not driving forward enough. It's too much wallowing in the great glorious sounds of the trombone. There, we don't need to do that. The trombone sounds great anyway. You don't have to accentuate that part. What you have to do is accentuate the the line and the the, the metric acceleration. Okay. Um, and I understand that, you know, that's, that's a range thing too. You know, we're going all the way up to high C sharps and things like that. So what I would do something like this, where uh, sometimes the range is getting in the way and we're focusing too much on playing the notes as opposed to playing the line. So, what I would do is I would simplify this and just work on, just pick one note, try to phrase that note in the way that you want the phrase to sound. So rather than worrying about playing all those high, you know, B sharps and C sharps and, and whatnot, do something like this where you start, this is now one, two, three, four before 2.30. work on this, the concept of what you want to do with the line. And then once you kind of have that established, then you can come back and start filling in the notes that will fit that. Okay. The, all the notes and everything like that are secondary to the line of the phrase. Do that for me. Pick any note. It doesn't matter which one you pick, but just kind of just play the rhythm with the desired intensity. And, and those 16th notes aren't as fast as you think. Ta, 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 ta. And so, we're discovering something about this, right? <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're making it simpler and you're actually having a harder time doing it. I think that's because you, you've, you've learned the piece as it's written and you're trying to do things with it without really thinking about what you're trying to do with that phrase. You're, you're, you're so caught up in the range and the, 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 the technicality of playing those 16th notes and the, the, qu the quadruplets that you're not really thinking about. I'm going from this A sharp to this E natural on that third measure, right? And so really, you know, and that's the thing with a, a lot of solos, like we, we sometimes feel the freedom to uh, just kind of expand and get very verbose and just kind of start doing our own thing without realizing that this, this is a piece that's written for a full orchestra. You can't get that you know, uh, rubato ish with, with a full orchestra behind you. They just, they can't do it. <laughs> if you start taking that much time and that much pull from beat to beat, they're just not going to have any idea where you are. Uh, piano, piano players are a little bit better at that. They get, <laughs> you know, they're, they're used to finding us. But um, the more that you can insist on that rhythmic integrity, I think the less you're going to find that you really want to do anything except stray from that straight time. Okay. Um, and get really used to doing that again on any note. Just, just think of it as a rhythmic exercise and get your point across with that phrase and realize that you have to get from, you get one breath, right? You have to get from, have to do that in one breath because if you breathe you're going to break that line yeah and you don't want to have to do that especially when you're playing way up high right I, i'm certainly yeah. not going to try to play those notes because i i haven't played this piece in a long time i would urge you to where where range and take each by down to the, the the basics of line direction and rhythm so the phrase to go what's the underlying rhythm and how am i going to get myself there and getting used to doing what that feels like with, you know, a very basic note or, you know, even if you just play, just say, play the downbeats. Ba, 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 
fa, fa, fa. Something like that can be as simple too, where you're just working on the phrase and start starting to incorporate some of the notes. Uh, you know, you could do that where you're, and again, you don't have to be in the right octave, but you could go. You know, I wasn't playing the right notes there, but you get the idea where you just kind of like pick one of those notes so that you start incorporating a little bit more into it. So um, I think that right there is going to help you a lot with this because there's a lot of this. I mean, if we look earlier in this movement too, there's a lot of this four, five, six, right? Or two, two, threes, four, four, fours, and so on. And thinking that what the, the idea here is, it, it's a, a, a metric acceleration. And we really want to make sure that we're getting that uh, forward uh, motion with the rhythm across. And if we take too much time uh, being roboto y, then it just kind of detracts from that sort of energy and direction. Okay? Do you want to try that one more time with just playing the real simple, uh, you know, st uh, static note through that ry uh, rhythm again, please? Yeah, yeah. And that really gets the idea across of that this is where the phrase is going to. As much as we like to think of that high C sharp as the top of the phrase, but it's really that nice long middle E that we have to get to, right? So again, you know, just never be afraid to scale things back to a, a simpler version to establish what you want to do musically. And then it's just a matter of, you know, building back on top. I was like, you can already play that. You can already play the notes. But sometimes our rush to kind of play the finished product gets in the way of you know, what we're actually trying to do with it. You know, we're so caught up and it's like, oh, I got to play this high C sharp and these high A's and all this sort of stuff. And it, and it just kind of, it gets too trombone and not enough music across. Well, I think that's great. Um, if you have any questions about anything I've just said, go ahead and ask them now. Otherwise, we're going to go on to the next person. Up next, uh, Cosmic is going to play the Undentino from uh, Cavatini. It's going to song. Okay. And uh, can we all just unmute our mics for one second just to say, uh, just to say thanks or like scream yay or whatever um, for Mr. Woodhead's performance too. We didn't really get much of an acknowledgement on that because we're on. <laughs> yeah, very much thanks place. to you. It was amazing and I just want to say thanks. Thank you. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Great playing. Thanks. Thank you. All right. I will just have to say that I was not able to find my copy of this piece, so I'm going to have to go off in memory here. All right. Very nice playing. Um, so yeah, I'm at a little little bit of a disadvantage because I don't have the, the, the part in front of me. Um, so again, we're, we're limited, limited in what we can talk about just because of the technology. Like I, it sounds, from what I can hear, 
like you have a really nice sound and it sounds like everything's pretty well in tune and every, all that is happening. So we're going to be, I can't really address those sort of issues uh, given what we have here. Um, oh, hang on. Somebody just said they found it. Let's see. Uh, let's see if I can pull that up real quick. Um, but what I do want to quickly address is um, a lot of the playing that I was hearing was kind of, I'm not going to say there wasn't direction in your playing because that would not be fair, but there was, there was very much a sense of beat to beat without a lot of sense of line going this way. And so um, this is written, it's in three, four. Yes. Okay. And with this sort of music, that, that sense of three, four pulse, that, that one has to be a little bit stronger than what I was hearing. So you were treating every note fairly equally. And, but most of the stuff was written where the, that, 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 that downbeat has a lot more, mm, just, you know, that, <laughs> whatever that is. Mm -hmm. there, there's a little bit more emphasis, a little bit more tension. So there's a lot of tension on one and then release on usually three, yada, ba, or on two, wherever it happens to be. Um, ba, da, da, dee, dum, e. So I, I wasn't getting that sense of the meter so much. Um, and things were sounding a little bit, oh, there we go. Boy, technology, you guys are awesome. Okay, so. Yeah, and you can see that you know we have those hairpins written too. So there's there's a lot of uh, uh, indications here. Ba da 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 di da 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 di da da. So that the that that one should really sing out more. And then don't be afraid to come back a little bit more than what you were doing. Um, could you try that? Uh, let's see. Just go ahead and start at the beginning of that section again and really With think the, about um, that. The eighth notes? Uh, you can start right at the beginning of the section you played, but just really think about leading to that one. Body yum, e. Body yum, e. Really lean to that, that, that one beat. All right. Okay, you're really doing what I'm asking you to do. Okay, so what I'd like to do though, is I feel like you're, you're again, you're doing exactly what I asked. So that's great. When you're going ba da 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 dee da da, -da you're, you're giving me too much on that three. So it's, what I'm hearing is da da, it's like too much of a this and not enough yeah, um, just back um, it off a little bit. If more. I wanna, yeah, I don't know if I want to try to play this, but mm. so it should really just kind of fade away. Think about it being less as a a trombone figure, as imagining a cellist just kind of like lifting that finger to get down to that low note or something like that where it's just effortless i don't want to have to hear tongue to make that note come out it should just kind of like yeah i want to hear it and i don't want it to be too short and i'm being extremely picky uh but i think that 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 really helps that sort of gesture think of it as a gesture and it's it just has to just be just so. <laughs> Am I being vague enough? <laughs> <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Okay, why don't you try that right there on those eighth notes? Mm -hmm. 
All right. <laughs> Yeah, that's the idea. Um, and try to have those, the end of one dovetail into the other, even though there's a rest. But I don't want that, so especially on that A sharp, like I just want that to sound the same. Just trying to okay. keep the same energy in a way. Yeah, yeah. Like, again, uh, my son plays cello, so I've been p picking up a lot more about cello, and it, it's I find it very helpful. Um, but that eighth note rest, don't think of it as it doesn't exist. Okay, that is really just an opportunity to breath to breathe. What he wrote was a half note and a quarter note, and all he wants you to do is take a breath. Yeah. So think of that. Yeah. Da, 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 and but the energy doesn't really go away. There's just that tiny little bit of space and then it just kind of keeps going. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Great. Try that one more time. You don't have to go. Uh, just just do those four bars. All right. Yeah. Dang it. My yeah. got stuck, but that's okay. But that that was perfect. <laughs> that was exactly what I wanted to hear. Could you try it one more time? Yeah. 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 That's that's really nice because now I can really hear. Um, that, that that whole phrase is now starting to connect better. So it's mm -hmm. not two bars, two bars, two bars, or, but it's now one longer phrase where I'm hearing that. So now it turns into a much longer phrase, which is much more enjoyable to listen to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that sounded really nice. Um, and especially now that I have the music, I want to hear. Um, so the the ending part of this, right? So this is what something where uh, we actually get a little bit away from that that three, and we get the sort of hemiola one two one two one two one two, right? Yeah. So, ba 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 bi dum bum bum bi ba ba bum bum bi bum bum bum, and then we go back into the the three feel. Um, mm -hmm. I just I I just like to hear that uh, section one time there. So. Starting at the um, the forte, the lagamente. Yes, that would be perfect. <laughs> What I'd like to hear, though, is a little bit more emphasis of that, that hemiola change. Uh, if you're familiar with, you know, Renaissance music, this is something they did a lot where the, you'd be going along in one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. It's sort of like that metric acceleration to the cadenza, you know, to mm -hmm. the cadence of the thing. So this is the same idea here where we get bum, bee, bum, 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 bee, bum, bum. And then we go back in. So, and it, it actually starts a little bit earlier, right? So we get. playing a little bit faster but it was more just to kind of get that point across of I want to hear that change of metric uh, 
uh, emphasis. Yeah. But one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, 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 two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then it goes so bum ba 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 ba, and we go back into that one two, bum 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 bum, right? Yeah. So, this is something that happens a lot in uh, three eight, you know, some sort of triple meter. Uh, you'll hear this all the time. Beethoven, Strauss, you know, like uh, all those composers love to play with these three four triple meters because there's so much ways that you can shift things around much more so than in like a duple meter so uh, one two one two one two one two one one two three one two three one and da 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 one two one two one two one okay um just to kind of like change the emphasis bum b bum 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 b bum one two three one two three one two three one two three one two one two you feel that? Yeah. Okay. Why don't you give that a shot? All right. Where should I start? At the um, the three eighth notes at the beginning of the line. Sure. <laughs> Okay, really good, really good playing. I'm starting, but I, and again, it's, I don't know if it's the, the technology or is letting us down here, but I feel like I'm losing a sense of the time that I, I don't want to, you know, the, but, but when you establish those eighth notes, da 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 dum bum, and then when you go to the, the largamente, bum, be, bum, it sounds like it slows down. And for me, that, Largamente, I mean, there's, there's a certain amount of interpretation here, but I don't think that of that as a, a metric Largamente, but as just a stylistic, uh, I'm going to you know, open up my sound and everything, but the intensity needs to move forward. Again, everything is kind of moving forward. So um, So if this is the the tempo we establish, uh, sorry. needs to drive more forward and I feel like you're relaxing and getting bigger in a way that we lose intensity as opposed to build intensity Mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah okay um could you do that one more time and if it helps you to set up the tempo um a little earlier just to kind of get that in our ear maybe back it up another two bars or or wherever you feel comfortable all right Okay, yeah. I think if you record yourself and listen back to that, what you're going to hear is the largamente is, it's, it's just slowing down. And that's something where, I, yeah, there's, there's interpretations and some people may want to do that. But for me, it really just starts to lose any sort of excitement because now it, 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 the sense of rhythmic pulse and drive just kind of dies away and it, it it needs to move forward um and so yes largamente with with sound but not getting slower um this is something where 
yeah, I, again, I haven't played this piece in a very long time, but I, I think of it more in one, honestly, than I do in three. Bom, be, bom, 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 be, bom. One, two, three, one, two, three. And it, I think part of it is that if you think of it too much in three, it does really start to bog down and, and get a little lethargic. Mm -hmm. um, so really try to move the, the phrase forward, move the intensity forward. Notice that the diminuendo doesn't happen until after we've played that middle E. Yeah. Right? So that's kind of the dying away part of it. But everything really needs to keep leaning forward. Um, in some ways, the end of the phrase isn't until we get to that middle E. Right? Yeah. Uh, so save something. Don't just, just because the largmente is there, don't just slam on the brakes and get really big. Okay. Build intensity. Um, build to the end of the phrase. One of the things I like to do um, with solos and uh, phrasing in general is I try to find you know, the peak of the phrase. Where is the direction of the phrase going? So for me, it's, it's definitely that E, right? I want to get to this E um, before the, the low C sharp. So I practice things going backwards. So I'll practice how I want this to sound. That's how I want the phrase to end, okay? And now I'm gonna back up. Okay. And I keep adding on in reverse order uh, so that I'm maintaining the integrity of the end of the phrase, which is the payoff, right? That's the, the reward for everything is like, how does the phrase end? And yeah. if I preserve that integrity of how that ends, and then I just start building on, it's going to inform how I play the beginning better than if I just start at the beginning. All right, well, here it says forte, largmente, ba, ba, ba. Well, where are you going to go from there? You've got nowhere. You've given it all away, right? That's the biggest you've got. And then you'll start looking at that high G sharp as like, oh, well, yeah, it's, I don't have to hammer it that big because I'm really going here instead. Okay. Uh, so that's one of the tricks that I, I like to do when I'm, I'm working on phrasing in, in general is just to find out what, where am I going anyway with this thing? And that's going to inform better how I, I play the, the phrase. Because um, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, the, the high notes, the most, uh, glamorous and it's like oh we've got to get that one but it's not always the most important note we got to re get our heads out of the trombone way of thinking where like on other instruments the high notes aren't really that hard <laughs> all right uh, any questions about anything I said there I think I'm all good you did a pretty good job going over things and I'm very thankful I was able to have this opportunity okay well I really appreciate your playing great job thank you thank you <laughs> All right, I think we're on to a bass trombone player, right? That's correct. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna find, hey, okay, you're set. I'm gonna find the music for uh, Roshu for you and post that as well. Oh, okay, I've got this one handy, but if you wanna put it up for other people to look at, that's great. Is, this is number 23, is that correct? Uh, 34. Well, I was way off. Okay, I gotta turn a few pages, 34. And I'll be starting at the, the, the uh, major, the change to major there in about 28. Perfect. And uh, down the octave. I don't know if anybody assumed that, but I guess I did. Not. But I submitted my information. <laughs> yeah, okay, great. Thank you. 
Yeah, really nice job. That was some really nice playing. Um, so the the biggest thing here, and I do have to say that that was really, really well played, um, but this is something that uh, happens a lot with Rose Shoes, I think, is the um, – they – it's easy to get a little too – well, John Swallow had this way of saying precious and, and just being treating it a little bit too, uh, I don't know, getting a little bit too syrupy and, and too overly sweet with some of this stuff. And uh, so kind of like everything gets into these little micro phrases, you know, so we get these little ba-da-dee, 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 ba and so it's like these little, you know, it's like this little, uh, little figures. And then we get very, you know, touching with the very ends of every single thing that we play without thinking about just sort of like the, the longer picture of the sort of piece. Um, now these are not masterpieces of music, you know, <laughs> uh, this is something, you know, nobody goes to a recital of Bordoni etudes, right? You know, you're not going to put that on the program. They are very useful, uh, resources for trombone players to work on the style of playing but in terms of the music eh, it's, it, it, you know it's not saint song right <laughs> um but what i would say with this sort of thing is uh, um try to find the the longer phrase um and try not to get so caught up in the note to note uh shaping of those little figures you know what I mean? So that, um, uh, so again, it was like this figure, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, and nine, where you had the just straight 16th notes, just straight, straight ahead, where, I mean, it, it sounded so nice, and but it was just, it was almost too much. I mean, I don't remember exactly everything you did with that. It was, but there was a lot of shaping of those sixteenth notes, right? Um, and that happened elsewhere, where you were kind of just being a, a little more stylized, I think, with that sort of playing. Then, um, I will just say that it, it can almost become distracting when you take that much time and do it. Um, if, if you do it once or twice at a big end of a phrase, I think that's certainly a valid thing to do. But if you're doing it every single two bars or every single, with every group of 16th notes, I'm gonna play a little bit here and there. Um, with the prior, like that's something that kind of gets me too, is like some people think they've heard prior and oh, we've got to get and they, they get all excited and they'll oh, I want to do all this with these 16th notes. Like, no, just, just play it, you know? Um, so what I'd like you to do, and just, just um, start again at the beginning, but really just try to one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, ba da 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 dee da dee ba da dee da da ba da dee da 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 dee da 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 dee da 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 And just, uh, I'm probably singing it faster than you were playing it, but uh, try, yeah. <laughs> so this is something where if I, uh, we, we play these, we often think in terms of legato playing. 
I treat them as exercises in phrasing. Okay. Now, if I asked you, how long is the first phrase? What would your answer be? Um, I would say the first four bar, well, for the downbeat of the fifth bar, I guess it starts. Okay. Yeah. So I would say that is the, if you think of phrases as being the, like an antecedent and consequent, there's the first part, you know, the question and the answer. So you're not wrong, but I would say that that is actually a subphrase of the overall bigger phrase, which is eight bars. Uh, okay. okay, I can see that. Yeah, I mean, they both end on the E, so it's still this, a similar cadence, right? right. Um, but if you look at the first four bars, and then look at the fifth and sixth bars, it's almost exactly the same, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> okay, so... And usually there's repetition uh, you know, within a phrase like that. And so it's not until the next eight bars that we see something different and we get the denatural in there and things change. So that's one way to start thinking things is, is broaden your horizons in terms of how long you're going to project that phrase. And sometimes just doing that of like, okay, instead of playing a four bar phrase, I'm going to play an eight bar phrase. It's going to change how you end that phrase as opposed to, Okay, four bars, four bars, four bars, four bars. So eight bars. Okay, that's a section. You know, that's, that's the kind of length of music that the human we're used to hearing in sort of Western art music is that eight bar phrase. So when we start chopping things up smaller, it can be, it can be a little overly distracting. Okay? okay, so could you do that now? Um, again, just play at the beginning and let's really hear that eight bar phrase as opposed to two four bar phrases. Yeah, I, I find that much more appealing. <laughs> um, now, obviously, you're playing this uh, down an octave, so, so breath really becomes an issue. Um, I'm going to try this, and, and so bear with me. I haven't played this one in a little while. <laughs> So I made the first one. I couldn't make the second one. Uh, but if you can find a way to hide the fact that you're playing the bass trombone down an octave and you need to breathe in that third bar, it would be really nice. <laughs> okay. um, and that might be something where it's like maybe you sneak a breath. Ya da 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 di ya da da di ya da ya da di ya da da di. And because whenever we take a breath, we're interrupting the the all of the energy, right? The the breath is what keeps the excitement in the phrase and the sound and everything going. So as soon as we breathe, everything stops. So if there's any way that we can carry that energy forward and not breathe even though it looks like that's a perfect place to breathe, it'll really carry that phrase forward, okay? So maybe, and again, this, this might be something you have to experiment with. Maybe there are better options, but maybe, maybe even just going slightly faster so that you can get that whole four bars in one breath. Again, you're, you're playing down an octave, so I'm going to give you a little bit of slack. But <laughs> could, could you try that? Um, sure. Just, just the first four bars and see if you can get from that, that B into the next bit without having to take a breath. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That just sent. What's that? I was on the E by the time I got to the E. But... 
Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, for me, that just, that really compels me as a listener much more than what you did the first time. Uh, Cause you know, everything was, it sounded so nice. And I think part of the, the, the trick with the bass trombone is that, you know, it is a much richer sound, um, especially the way you're playing. Like it's, it sounds so good that we just forget about certain things. <laughs> it's like, well, it sounds great, but you still have to move that line. And that's, you know, uh, for me with these Bordonis, it's like, it's all about that phrase. It's really trying to get that phrase across uh, and do it with direction. Uh, and often that means, you know, just keeping the air going as long as I can. Uh, this is a trick that probably doesn't apply to you. You're, you're a very advanced player and, and sounds great. But what I encourage my younger students to do, uh, especially where with a lot of these, it's like getting that nice relaxed breath so that you can kind of continue without stacking air on top of a, a really tight breath. Uh, if just inserting rest so that you can continue. So let's say you play that opening phrase. So that I just take another beat or two so that I can relax and then breathe. And then, then I could make that next four bars in one breath again, uh, where if I'd just kind of taken that one eighth note that's given, I might be forced to breathe in a way that's not conducive to the, getting the phrase across that I want. Um, again, that's not so much for you, but maybe more for, for uh, some of the younger people out there. Um, okay. And the one thing about that too is like when you, you prove to me that you can play that four bars in one breath, <laughs> which, which means now that you're going to have to do it <laughs> every <laughs> single time, right? So like you just did it. Now I, now I know you can do it. So now I'm going to want to hear it every single time. Uh, but that might be something where, yeah, it's hard. Like it's hard to get that breath. And maybe you, you, you have to resort to some of those techniques of like a quick sniff, sniff breath or something to, kind of hide the fact that you're playing a bigger instrument down the octave, but um, never lose sight of that, that phrase and like really trying to broaden your scope in terms of what you're doing with the direction. Uh, don't be satisfied for perfect sounding 16th notes and uh, you know, just because the, you know, the, the phrase marking goes over two bars and then this group of notes and this group of notes, expand your own horizons and try to push the phrase to where it really is. Remember, these are all uh, edited by Rochu, right? They're not the original script. Uh, and who knows if, if Bornodi had anything over them anyway. You know, sometimes the, the phrase is supposed to be so obvious that he wouldn't need to do it. Um, I'd like to hear more of your playing. So do you think you could... Let's hear some of the next phrase. So the one starting on the D natural. da dee da 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 dee and let's see if we can really get that, again, see so if we can get that four bars without having to, to really take a breath and really sing that phrase. Okay. Yeah, and I, again, like, even though you had to take a little breath in there, maybe where you didn't want to, I like that because it connected the phrase more than where you take a breath after the E, like the way it's written where there's a break there. Um, e, ya, da, di, da, 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 di, ya, da, 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 da. I, I like that a lot more. Um, so this is something where like, if you really do look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, right at the end, it starts to break down where the eight bars are just because we're getting into like the, the coda. Um, oh, and that's what I wanted to talk about is the, the coda. Um, but pretty much all this stuff is going to be in eight bar phrases. So when we get to the coda, though, this is something where I was like, we were getting a lot of this B dot, B dot, B dot, B dot. It's like two notes, two notes, two notes, two notes. And I want you to, you know, 
think of this as like a, a piano part where you're just not happening to play the downbeat, okay? But imagine if you were, you've got to keep that intensity going. Um, even though you're not, there's some silence, you have to do something where you're ca carrying the energy through. And then go on from there. So um, could you start for me? Uh, see that C sharp after the, all those 16th notes? Da 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 dee da 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 dee. Ba da da dee. And then uh, start right there. Uh, this is Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven before the end on big beat two. Okay. Where were all the, the great notes there? Yeah, the easy part. <laughs> Good, great, yeah, again, I love your playing. I want to hear less rest. Okay. To the point where I, I don't want to hear any rest. Because <laughs> I, I, I want you to hear what it's going to sound like uh, carrying the energy all the way through. Again, we got to get to that E. There's no diminuendo, right? right. It's just the next thing happens is pianissimo. And, and everything, especially where we get this, this sort of flat six, five, that's a really kind of like tear jerking thing. So we really have to get there with a little bit more intensity. And so when we hear, there's just too much space to kind of get that across. So. Play it as if that the second note is a full quarter note. And so just play it all the way through. Just one time. Uh, go ahead. Just start on the F sharp this time. You don't have to go back any further. Okay. Yeah. So now you hear how that really wants to sound, right? Okay. Now play it just the same thing, but now just a hair of space. As, as little space as you can actually make that and still say that there's an eighth note rest. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's much better. I mean, come on, we're trombone players. We don't want to take rests. We want to fill it up with sound, right? Uh, but to my ear, that just sounds, it, it, it conveys the energy better. And it's one of those two, like, uh, it's a very common thing where you have a tie to always play that second note shorter. D dot, D dot. You didn't necessarily do that, but you were still, there's room to just kind of carry that energy just a little bit more. Uh, I wish I had my piano. I do have the piano copies of these, so yeah, I'd be kind of curious to see what, um, the piano is doing at that point because I, they're, you know, it's, it's one of those things like it's a left hand, right hand thing on the piano. It's like they're, it's really just, you know, you just happen to be the, the right hand of, of a, a figure that's playing all the notes. So don't, don't really pay much attention to that rest there. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that, that was really great. Um, uh, do you have any questions for me before we kind of open it up to the group here and Oh, thank you. Great job. A few people posted questions in the chat. Okay. And All right. uh, first one, it looks like this is from Andrew Coster. Have you ever met Wolf and Barger from oh. WMU or Lynn? Yep. You see the questions? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Wolf and Barger, yes, I know Steve uh, pretty well. Um, yeah, he's been, uh, he and his students have come to the trombone workshop many times. Uh, I'm actually very honored because he invited me out to do a masterclass at his school uh, 
hopefully I'll be going out there this coming fall or uh, in the spring, I guess, depending on when things get back together. But yeah, Steve is great. Um, his students are always doing really well at our competitions and he's brought his trombone choir um, at least two times that I can think of. So yeah, I know Steve very well. Awesome. There's a couple questions here about tone. This is my favorite trump. Any advice for developing tone? That gets posted on the server <laughs> at least once a day. Yeah, I know. And that's, 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 that's a tough one. Um, so when I think about tone, um, tone is a concept and tone is something that we can work on. Uh, it, it's kind of, but also it's very personal. There, there, there's, you know, we're all given a certain set of physical attributes that either make playing the trombone easier or more difficult. Um, and yeah, you know, there's just only so much that you can overcome with different equipment and different practicing and things like that. But to be really basic, con uh, tone comes from what's in your head and what are you trying to emulate. So how much and what are you listening to? You know, are you listening to recordings of Joe Alessi or Ian Bousfield or Jim Markey or who are you listening to? Uh, and also not you know limiting in any way so having a broad concept of what the trombone can sound like is very helpful um, i also find that as great as recordings are they are very misleading and it can be kind of hard to base your tone based on what somebody sounds like on a recording if you're trying to emulate what joe alessi sounds like in a recording you know, that's while technology is great and he's amazing. If you stand next to him and hear him play, it doesn't sound exactly like it does on a recording. And there's something about being in the physical presence of a great player and, and hearing that and kind of seeing what they're doing and kind of taking everything in together that will help you um, with your concept of tone. Um, so listening is the first place, but also being around other trombone players. So going out and, and taking lessons with you know, professional players in your area, going to festivals, concerts, you know, all these sort of things where you can get exposed to being in the same room and space as these trombone players will really help you generate your own concept of what the trombone should sound like and how that then you can go about making that happen. Um, I found it much more helpful to my own concept of sound when I finally got into the army band and I was surrounded by other professional trombone players. You know, I had always been in schools and I was fortunate enough to always be kind of like at the top of the, the studio. And so there weren't necessarily other trombone players for me to emulate. I was kind of always at the top end. So now all of a sudden I'm in a professional setting and I'm not the top guy anymore. And now I have to say, like, oh, they, they're doing this and they sound like this and they're doing this on these sort of things. And, and that sort of close proximity really helped uh, my own concept of tone and, and how to play. So start with listening to everything you possibly can, but as also as much as possible, do that in person. Uh, being in the same space is going to help you a thousand fold than, you know, playing brand X mouthpiece on brand Y trombone. Those things are completely secondary and they're only gonna help you get to what's already in your head anyway. I find that with equipment, I can play on anything and I still sound like me and it's just a matter of how much harder does that equipment make that realization of that concept than other equipment. It's not like I sound like this because I play on this equipment. I sound like I do because this is what I want to sound like in my head. And then certain equipment just makes that easier or not. So that was a very long winded answer. Uh, hopefully it helps in some way. <laughs> that was really actually, I've wondered that for a long time and that was really clear to me. Thank you. Um, a couple more. 
Do you have any suggestions for pieces to um, that help to work on fundamentals? Because this person has run out of stuff during quarantine. Oh my! <laughs> wow! If you've run out of stuff, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like every day I'm finding new resources. Maybe that's just because of where I am uh, and, and people kind of send stuff my way. Um, but, you know, if, if you've exhausted the Arbenz book, then you're doing better than me. <laughs> um, you know, that's, that's a, a book I've been playing for decades and I doubt that I'll ever be rid of it or, you know, better than it. Uh, but yeah, I, I certainly understand that you can only play so many Arben's book and so many Rose shoes in a day before you just kind of get fed up. Um, I have, let's see, I'm going to embarrass myself and show you my, my very unorganized stack of music that I have over here. Hang on a second. See if this works. Oh, I'm just going to do it this way. Okay. So here's some of my trombones and stuff on the ground, but you can see stack of music here. Stacks and stacks of music over there. And then I've got this gigantic bag full of, where is it? More music there. And that's just the stuff I have down here in the basement where I practice. I have, you know, more stuff upstairs in my, my office. Um, but if, Rather than, so just, you know, resources of, of actual books, one of the things that I will do is um, generate my own exercises and challenges. So <clears throat> one of the things that you can always do is take something you're working on and play it in a different way that's going to challenge uh, and try to find something that you need to work on and design an exercise around it. Um, you know, whether it be a particular lip slur that you can, you know, invent, you know, like try to just do something in a different way. Um, if you're playing row shoes, you can, <clears throat> obviously, you know, bass trombone players are very comfortable playing down, down an octave, but uh, can you play it in tenor clef down an octave? Can you play it alto clef down an octave? Can you play it tenor clef, alto clef? Uh, can you change it? the key? Can you transpose it to a different key? Um, all those sort of things are, are very valid ways of, of expanding what you can work on. But um, I've also found that just the, the resources online, um, there's, a, there's a ton of free music and things out there to play. A lot of times I, I like to do multi-track recordings of myself just as a way to kind of keep myself in endurance shape, which I find is the, the hardest challenge right now is that, you know, I'm used to being in rehearsals all day and, and long concerts with concert band, which is pretty demanding on your embouchure. And now I'm just kind of practicing at home <clears throat> and it's pretty easy to just stop when I start to get tired and I need to be able to play you know, long concerts. So I find these multi-track recordings a great way to work on that endurance because I have to get through this whole piece and sometimes, you know, seven or eight or nine times in a row. Uh, and that kind of helps keep that endurance. So finding arrangements and then playing them by yourself uh, is a great thing to do. And uh, generally, you know, I'm, I don't do any arranging myself. I wish I did, but I can just go online and like search for, you know, whatever piece of music you want to try to play, find a PDF of it, and then try to record it. Um, and then, you know, you can go through those other things too, where it's like, okay, well, can I transpose it? Can I play in a different clef? Can I do these other things to it to, to make it a little bit more challenging? So, um, yeah, I think that sort of thing, you know, the, if you want a list of like books that I'm playing out of, I'd be happy to post that. Um, I might, that might actually be something I could just do later as a post where I kind of show you all the different books that I play out of. Generally speaking, what I'll do is I'll take two or three books and I'll play through you know, I'll do a, an Arbenz, I'll do a Rochu, and then I'll do like a, a bass trombone, like Lou Gillis. Book. And then I'll just kind of cycle through and then do another one of those, and, you know, just kind of like until I've played for a certain amount of time. So um, hopefully that answers your question. I think, like I said, I might I go ahead and make a post where I'll, I'll put down like a whole bunch of books that maybe you can look up for yourself later. That would be amazing. We'd all love that. Um, 
Thank you. Next question. What made you choose the trombone? Did you always want to join the military? Oops, I lost it. And what made you want to make trombone your career? Okay, those are great questions. <clears throat> so first of all, the reason I picked the trombone. <clears throat> so I started uh, in the sixth grade and I started on the baritone horn. And the only reason I started on the baritone was because the music teacher came to school, <clears throat> brought all these big shiny instruments, and that was the biggest one. And I was just kind of like, my eyes were drawn to it. And if you, you know, it, it was pretty easy to make a nice sound on it. And so I played the baritone. After a year, um, I wanted to have my own instrument. <clears throat> and then it was buying a trombone versus buying a baritone. The difference in price was pretty significant. <laughs> so my parents basically said, well, it looks like you're going to play with the trombone now. So that was really the only reason I switched is just because the, the, the economics of buying an instrument were such that the, the trombone was better. Um, uh, and I, I'm not really sure, you know, it's not that I, I chose the trombone or, or the baritone. It's just one of those happens, you know, I was in the sixth grade. I was what, 11, 12 years old, you know, it wasn't the rational decision of somebody <laughs> It's the age that I am now, you know, it's, uh, I'm happy that I made that decision, but it's not like I went out with a great plan of becoming a professional trombone player all those years ago. Uh, it's just a very, you know, random chain of events. You know, the music teacher must have needed some low brass players in her band and that's why she brought them to the school and that's how I ended up playing them. Um, I had great music teachers and I, I had some early success on the instruments and so it kind of kept me going. Um, but all through high school, you know, my, the idea of being in the military was, was nowhere on my radar. I had I had no desires of joining the military. In fact, I kind of I remember one time thinking I was like, oh, why would I do that?" You know, it was just just not on the horizons for me. I had always thought I would be uh, an orchestral trombone player, uh, maybe a soloist, maybe in a brass quintet. And I was well into my graduate degrees. I had completed. My master's, I was doing a doctorate at the University of Maryland, and I was in the Washington, D.C. area, and that's the first time that I really started to consider the military because in those orchestras, uh, sorry, in the orchestras at school, uh, my section mates were uh, members of those bands. They were, you know, in the Marine Band and the Army Band, Navy Band, I think, and, you know, they were finishing up their degrees before they retired. And they were telling me about what the jobs were. And, and that's when I started to realize that they were really good jobs for trombone players. So I, that's when I started to actually take auditions uh, for the military band. So I was 26 years old before I ever really considered that as a career path. Um, and I'm, I'm extremely grateful that I had that opportunity and that I'm doing it because I feel like I, I'm doing exactly what I wanted to want to do with a trombone because um, I've always loved orchestral music and, and I love playing in orchestras. But for me, uh, I've also been a lot more into different genres and different styles of music than just orchestral music. I love playing jazz. I love playing rock and roll tunes, you know, all that sort of stuff. So the, my path in the army band has allowed me to do that stuff on a regular basis. So I may not be playing Bruckner and Mahler in an orchestra, but I'm playing the trombone a lot. And that's kind of what I enjoy more is just making music with great musicians and, and having a lot more variety in what I play. Um, so I guess there's, there's that answer. Got it. Out of respect for your time, there's still about probably four or five questions in the chat. I just wanted to make check in and see how much time you want to spend. Uh, let's, let's, uh, I got a few more minutes and then let's get as, as many as we can, let's say by 4.30. Okay, got it. Um, eight minutes. Um, would you say that there's anything missing from the standard orchestral approach for those who want to be a military musician? Yes, definitely. <clears throat> and it's not anything against the standard orchestral approach. It's just that the 
the scope of music that you play, uh, especially when preparing for orchestras, is a lot more limited. You know, you're playing the music. I don't think you're going to see anything earlier than uh, Mozart and, you know, on up through contemporary music. And even when I say contemporary, you're probably not going to see anything past uh, Stravinsky, maybe, uh, maybe Copeland. Uh, so 200, 250 years at most worth of music there. And all in that sort of style, you know, most of the stuff you're going to be playing for orchestras, especially in the audition circuit, is, you know, the late romantics. You know, you're going to be playing a lot of Strauss, a lot of Wagner, Mahler, you know, and um, again, I, I love all that music, but in, in the army band and the military bands, you're going to have to be able to do all that stuff as well, but you're also going to have to be able to play you know, a big band arrangement. You're going to have to be able to play a rock tune. You're going to have to be able to play a march. Um, and all those things you know, might sound pretty easy and basic, but th this is all about style. And, um, you know, just like you don't play Mozart the same way that you play Mahler, you don't play a Sousa march the same way that you play the Hungarian march. So there's a lot of style in, in these pieces and it's like, you know, playing a rock tune, like you got to know how to do the articulations to a horn section. You know, if you're playing a big band arrangement of something, you got to know how to swing. Um, and, and those sort of things I find that a lot of just orchestral players don't get, you know, they get very flustered and, and they don't understand the style, stylistic differences when you go to those other genres. And that's something that I think um, <clears throat> young players should really be aware of in that, uh, <clears throat> you know, f working trombone players, you know, professional trombone players, there are a lot more opportunities out there than just orchestras. I mean, orchestras are great, wonderful, uh, but, you know, there, there are very few of them, really, and the very few positions within them. Uh, you think about guys that make work as recording artists, you know, in the studios or all the different things that you can do with a trombone and, you know, uh, playing tuba mirum is not necessarily going to get you there. You know, you've got to be able to do a lot more different things, you know, uh, being able to double on different instruments, doubling on bass trombone, doubling on alto, doubling on euphonium, those sort of things can be very helpful too. So the only knock, I guess, is really just about the scope of music in general is just that orchestral playing is just a little bit narrow compared to the sort of stuff that we do. And uh, next one, any, whoops, where'd it go? Someone said, thank you for that. Um, oh. <laughs> what do you do for exercises as a warm up and any tips or intonation in the high register? Mm -hmm. Okay. So warm ups uh, for me are uh, generally speaking, I, I do the same thing that everybody else does, but it's not always the same. Uh, I don't have a routine that, you know, go from this exercise to this, to this, to this, and it's the same every day. But I do the same elements every day. So, you know, I do long tones, I do lip slurs, I do articulations, uh, all that sort of stuff, scales and arpeggios, but it's not the same every single day. So I like to do have a little bit of variety in things that I work on. Um, but I also don't spend a lot of time just warming up. Uh, I mean, generally speaking, if I'm not warmed up within five to 10 minutes, uh, that's too much time. And, you know, I, by that point, I'm just practicing, which is, there's nothing wrong with that either. So just warming up, though, is, is usually pretty fast. And um, it's going to be some long tones. It's going to be some lip slurs. Going to work in some scales. And uh, for me, all that I'm really thinking about is um, making sure that I'm getting that the vibration of my lips going. Um, I'm not thinking about air. I'm not thinking about tongue or anything else. I'm thinking about creating that vibration right here with my embouchure and making sure that that is what's generating the sound for for the day. Uh, once that's kind of going and I'm moving around through the instrument, then I'm pretty much ready to go. Um, 
but yeah, my, I've, I've done like group warm up sessions for like uh, master classes here and there. And I can, I kind of go through uh, some different variations of things that I work on, but generally speaking, it's, it's not really any different than most people. Uh, just like I said, long tones, lip slurs, scales, arpeggios, some articulation work, and then I'm good to go. As far as working intonation in the high range, um, that's a very good question and uh, try to give you a, a, some useful information here in a short amount of time. But uh, one of the most useful tools is um, a drone and working with the drone to really work on pitch and hearing the intervals. So it's not just that I'm playing a high B flat against a high B flat and making sure that that's in tune, but maybe playing a drone on an E flat and then playing a scale segment up. So E flat up to B flat, and then really working all those notes in between, making sure that I'm, I'm hearing those intervals differently. So the biggest thing with high range and pitch is understanding that uh, it, unless we're playing with a piano, which we don't do that often, those notes are going to be in different places depending on what chord we're playing, right? So a B flat and one chord is going to be here, another chord it's going to be here. We have to be able to, to move it around depending on what we're playing against. So using a drone helps me uh, place those pitches in a real world, real world setting so that I can really hear what I'm playing against. And um, I don't think anything else really kind of gets you there except for that drone. Um, I do a fair amount of work uh, just buzzing and really trying to get the buzz up into those high notes as best I can too. And that's also to make sure that I'm generating the pitch here and not relying on the trombone being in position, you know, uh, right here. You know, that, but I'm insisting that the pitch is where it needs to be. If I can buzz that pitch and make the, the match the drone, then I'm in good shape. If I'm relying on bearing down and putting the slide in a certain place and hoping it comes out, then I'm not going to have success. So I really think about making it happen here and having that uh, work done with the drone so that I know what it should sound like when I get there uh, helps those things line up the best, I think. Thank you. For those of you that can't remember that uh, all the past workshops are available on YouTube. So you can kind of binge watch them, <laughs> especially with all the free time that everybody has right now. Um, I just wanted to say thank you so much for taking the time to, to do this for all of us and also for taking the risk of jumping on the very first masterclass, not knowing if it would be a total success or a major flop. Um, this was super successful. We had 25 people in the room at some point. Awesome. A lot of questions. Your playing sounded great and uh, it was clear, which was made me really happy. Um, Great. For all of you in the chat, um, I just posted a link for a Google Doc that, um, that Ponch made to get some feedback so we know how things went for you. Um, you can unmute now if you want to say a, a big thank you again to Mr. Woodhead for his time and his playing and feedback. And uh, thanks again for all of you for making the time to be here. And we'll, we'll keep doing this in the future.